Okay then gang, so far as we've been making this app, we've been caching different assets so that we can view our app offline, which is awesome. But as of yet, we've not worked with any kind of data. Yeah, we have this dummy stuff right here, but it's not real data. And when we start to work with real data and a database, that is a completely different ball game to caching assets. When it comes to using data offline, we need to take a slightly different approach than using our service worker to cache data responses because the data could be constantly updating and changing in the database. If we start caching the responses from that database, then we might always be showing old data to the user for a long time. So the way we deal with data in a PWA is a bit different and it's gonna vary depending on which database solution that you're gonna use for the app. Now for some databases, you're gonna find yourself using the indexed DB API right here directly to keep things in sync and allow offline data use. That is an option, but I'd like to use a database service which makes accessing and using data offline even easier. And it will use this under the hood, but we're not gonna to have to directly get involved with it. So the database solution that we're gonna be using is gonna help with all this, and it's called Firestore. It's created by Google Firebase. Now, Google Firebase is a bunch of different services which act as a backend to our application. And we can see all of those different things right here. We have cloud functions that enables us to run code on a server. We have authentication, hosting, cloud storage, and we have this cloud Firestore database right here. And this comes built with offline support, which is perfect for our PWA, meaning that it will allow users to view data when they're offline as well as online. And Firestore takes care of all of that offline data for us. We don't really have to do much at all, which is freaking awesome. It does this by interacting with that index DB, the browser's built-in database right here. And it stores data there for us so that when we go offline, we can still access it. So the first thing to do is sign up for a free Firebase account. And once you've done that, just go to your console over here. And this is gonna list your different projects. I already have a couple, but I'm gonna make a new one. And I'm gonna call this food-ninja-pwa. Okay, so I'm gonna accept the terms at the bottom and create this project. This will just take a few seconds. And then when it's done, just press on continue. And this is gonna take you to the control panel for this project. Now, this area right here is essentially gonna act as the back end now to our application. And we could use any one of these different services, authentication, the database, storage, etc. We're not gonna focus on all the different things. If you wanna learn more, I do have a whole series on authentication and on Firestore and on hosting. So feel free to check out those playlists on my YouTube channel. For now, we're gonna focus on the database. And again, I'm not gonna go into a lot of depth about Firestore. I'm gonna teach you all the basics here and how to hook it up with our PWA. But if you wanna learn more about Firestore, I'll leave a link to the complete Firestore playlist down below. Anyway, once you've clicked on database, create a database, make sure it's the Cloud Firestore one and not the one down here, the real-time database. So create this database and we want to start in test mode, which means we can easily develop and we can access all the data from our application over here. But later on, make sure if you publish your app, you address the different Firestore rules so that only the appropriate people can access the data. Okay, so let's enable this for now. And this here now is our Firestore database. So in Firestore databases, we have collections of data and each collection will store documents of a particular type of data. For example, we could make a collection called users and that could store user documents. So each document would represent a single user, right? What we're gonna do is make a collection called recipes and that's gonna create the collection for us. When we first create a collection, it's gonna ask us to also create our first document for that collection. Now this document ID right here, this is gonna be a unique ID for each individual document so that if we want to get a reference to a particular document later on, we can use that unique ID and everyone is gonna be different. Now we don't need to fill this in ourselves, it's gonna auto-generate if we leave it blank. 
So what we want to do is make up a few different fields. Now, fields and values are basically key value pairs, a bit like a JavaScript object. So we're going to have a property name and a property value, essentially, and each one has a type as well. So we're going to say we want a title of the recipe, and that title could be something like Ninja Soup. And we also want to add a new field, and that field is going to be the ingredients. And this is going to be mushrooms, onions, and garlic. Okay, so now we're going to save this document, and it's going to save it to this collection. So we see now we have this recipes collection right here, and in a second we're going to see this document right here. And when we click on this document, it will open up on the right and we can see the two different properties, ingredients and title and the values of those properties as well. And this is the unique ID that Google Firebase created for us as well. OK, so let's add one more document by pressing on add document over here. Again, leave the ID blank. It's going to auto generate. This time we'll do a title property of veg burger and the ingredients are going to be soybeans, onion, garlic again, why not, and mushrooms again, why not. Okay, so save that, and now we have two different documents, and the ID is unique for each one, right? So we have this one, Ninja Soup, and also the Veg Burger, cool. So now we have a bit of data stored inside our Firestore database. And what we want to do is hook up our application on the front end with this database on the back end. So what we're going to do now is go to the project overview and then we're going to add an app. So to do that, click on this web and then we're going to register an app. So we'll call this Ninja Food and register the app. And then this is going to give us a bit of code that we have to copy and put into our project. So let's just copy that right here and over in our index file. Let's open this up and come to the bottom and I'm going to paste it just above these other files right here. So let me paste that in and just scoot this in. OK, so now what we're doing is putting in a link to the Firebase app right here. We also need a link to the Firebase Firestore. So I'm going to duplicate this and add in Firebase hyphen Firestore. And we need that because we're using the Firestore. So let's get rid of this comment right here. And then this is the configuration for our application, basically so that we know which backend to connect to. And then down here, what we're doing is initializing our Firebase app on the front end. We also need to initialize our database instance from the front end so that we can communicate with the database from here as well. So I'm going to store that in a constant called DB and set it equal to Firebase dot Firestore like so. And now in the future, if we ever want to communicate with the database from our own application, we're going to use this DB constant to do things like get data or save data, etc. OK, so the last thing I want to do is actually create a JavaScript file over here. So I've got a new file and I'm going to call this db.js. And this is going to be all the JavaScript that we write to interact with the database. So I'm going to hook that up from the index file as well. So let's do another script tag and we'll say the source is going to be equal to forward slash JS forward slash DB dot JS. So now we're hooked up to that as well. And so now we're in a good position to start communicating with our database. And we're going to start that in the next video.